Yo, all Snapchat. So I did a video maybe the day after Pokemon Go came out, and I was talking about how by the end of the year we might have pro leagues, like paid professionals, but also how it might trigger AR into the mainstream. It's now been a week since release, and by far it is Nintendo's biggest mobile game ever. They've got uh, over 15 million downloads, and they're earning roughly $2 million a day. It's going nuts. And with an average daily active user time of 43 minutes, that's more than double or triple what most other social media platforms are doing. So more than WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, and Messenger. And I'm sure you've noticed the social and cultural phenomena that's happening, you know, every pit stop is just littered with people. Um, even in my small town of Wollongong, there's, there's one particular area where there's hundreds of people every day. Now I mentioned in my first video about this that there's definitely going to be a bit of a fad phase. It's going to be that, like a hype curve with any technology where a lot of users will drop off. So their main challenge now is to keep user engagement. But the combination of the two companies behind Pokemon Go is pretty powerful. I mean, it's not their first rodeo in both of these spaces. Um, and I think they'll be very closely looking at user engagement stats and how to maintain daily active use. Like, Pokemon is owned by Nintendo, Nintendo thinking like Nintendo Wii, Game Boy, all that sort of stuff. Nintendo knows really, really well how to um, create games that are fun and engaging for the masses. And Niantic has a background in learning with Ingress, their previous augmented reality game, which is very similar in game mechanics. Um, and considering Niantic is owned by Google, then you've got all that augmented reality overlay mobile stuff. When I did my first video on Pokemon Go about a week ago, I wasn't aware that they were already working on a wearable device called Pokemon Go Plus, which they're releasing this month. And what it does, it buzzes when there's Pokestops and Pokemon nearby. What I'd really love to see within the next 12 months is for one of you guys, or Google, or Facebook, or Nintendo, or Microsoft, to release augmented reality glasses. Imagine normal looking sun sunnies, normal looking Ray-Ban style glasses. Because if Pokemon Go continues to grow over the next year, this is the wave for augmented reality. And augmented reality, in my opinion, is the next great human revolution, the next paradigm. It's pretty clear we're on this kind of exponential path towards the singularity, transcending our own biology and merging of the machines around 2045. And you can actually track the trend. So you can see, like, in the last 30 years, how much we've gone through. So you can almost roughly say that 30 years ago was kind of the era of personal computing. That's when that kind of took off and started to go mainstream. 15 years ago was when the internet kind of went mainstream, around like 2000-ish. Then we had smartphones, which was maybe around seven years ago that went mainstream. The iPhone, the first iPhone, was actually only released in 2007. That's only, what's that, nine years ago. Right now we're about to enter the VR, the virtual reality revolution, the paradigm of VR. Um, you've got, you know, Oculus Rift, you've got Samsung Gear VR, you've got HTC Vive. They're going to go mainstream within the next year or two. So all the VR devices are basically launched now, but most of them will be kind of available for the public to buy by Christmas this year. Uh, but most of the people that buy them will be the hardcore gamers with the computers that can handle the grunt. I reckon by the end of 2017, maybe like 50% or more of people will own a virtual reality headset because they'll be like $200, $300, they'll be standalone, you won't have to connect them to a computer or include your phone. And the VR paradigm is awesome because it's going to basically replace all of our monitors, we can throw those things out, but it's also going to replace all entertainment and media. I mean, all TVs, movies, shows, all just, all consumption. I guess the best way to explain it is like uh, any activity you do where you sit down and you look at a glowing rectangle. <laughs> so TVs, monitors, desktops, laptops, lectures, movies. So my prediction is that by the end of 2017, so next year, I think roughly 50% of people will be consuming and doing those activities using VR headsets that they own. Then by 2018, end of 2018, it'll be most people. But each of these paradigms comes quicker than the last. You think of like uh, personal computers, 30 years, uh, internet, 15 years, smartphones, seven years, VR, four years, AR, two years. <laughs> I still remember back in uh, very early days at university, um, I was one of the first in my friend group to have a smartphone and no one else did. And I was like, okay guys, by the end of the year you're all going to have smartphones. They're like, oh, you're full of shit. <laughs> but by the end of the year they all have smartphones. Um, and that's part of the reason why these technologies and paradigms are fueled faster, particularly if they're social based. I mean, Pokemon Go is partly being fueled by the social activity. I mean, by evolution, we humans are very social creatures. Um, you know, these, these teams, these technology memes, things like Pokemon Go and augmented reality and smartphones, they're hacking the cultural operating system. That fear of missing out is a huge driver for human psychology. I mean, that's why people are downloading the app and trying it out and getting hooked on Pokemon Go. And the same thing is going to happen when augmented reality glasses. And this is why I really hope that someone out there is working on very rudimentary style augmented reality glasses. They don't have to be great, they don't have to be perfect holograms, they don't even have to show holograms necessarily. Because when you go to a local Pokestop and you see all these people ha uh, hanging around with their heads down doing stuff on their phones, it's clearly some mass delusion. You're like, what is happening? What am I missing out on here? Should I get involved? 
Now you turn up to one of those Pokestops and you see people wearing glasses and they're not looking down at their phones, they're just looking around and they're using their hands to throw Pokeballs at Pokemon. The instant one person does that, the instant there's like one person with these glasses on looking around, seeing an augmented reality view, catching virtual Pokemon through augmented reality. The next day at that Pokestop there'll be two people wearing augmented reality glasses. The next day there'll be four, the day after that there'll be eight, then 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, yeah, on and on. These type of things are called killer apps, so when there's a new technology paradigm, people don't quite understand what it is or what, it, what benefit or what value it brings to their life, and it's hard to explain the concept, killer apps are kind of what explain it. They're a bit like metaphors, like I'm very big on this, this concept of whenever a new technology comes out, you have to explain it through metaphors and analogies of previous technologies that people are aware of. This is why on your computer you have things called files and you store them in folders. And where does that analogy, that metaphor come from? From the office, from filing things, filing documents away into folders and putting them in cabinets. I mean, typically when augmented reality is talked about, we talk about overlays, like overlaying your world with data. It's like, it's like having the internet overlaid on reality. And like, to the layman, that means nothing. But when you apply the metaphor to Pokemon, the concept of the metaphor of Pokemon applies very well to this whole game because it's, you know, it's an overlay, people understand the storyline, they get what they're doing, um, but the problem is that you're constantly staring down at your phone and looking at it. And the value people place on solving this problem will be reflected in the sales figures for the Pokemon Plus device, the wearable, um, because that allows you to pay, basically passively play Pokemon Go 24-7 without having the app open. But even then, the, uh, the device buzzes, it tells you there's a Pokestop nearby, then you have to pull out your phone, open the app, blah blah blah, it's a, it's a long laborious process. Wouldn't it be better if it's just augmented reality always on? Instead, you just wear these normal looking sunglasses, you walk down the street and you see Pokemon on the street and you can just catch them with your hands because it recognizes your gestures and Pokemon becomes your life. And Google has an incentive and motivation to do this. They want this paradigm to come about. They tried it with Google Glass, the technology wasn't quite there and it kind of like made, it wasn't cool. It made you stand out and look like a geek. So if, if Pokemon Go is the killer app for this augmented reality thing and we end up all wearing within say about three, four years, hopefully within like two or one year, um, we're all wearing augmented reality glasses, it changes everything. Because then the internet and the real world have merged, they're not two separate entities anymore. We are bathed in information and we get to choose our own realities and what overlays we put on the world. There'll be tens of thousands of other similar augmented reality games that are passively running 24-7 so you can gamify your life. It doesn't have to be catching Pokemon, it could be any other overlay you can imagine. And then we'll have augmented reality app stores. I think I've talked about this before, where you'll be able to download small little apps and you can pay, you know, either get them free or pay a dollar for them and do things like change the sky to purple. That and the whole social implications, I mean, we'll be able to like know who everyone is. We won't have this like monkey-based fear, tribal fear of like, I don't know that person, that random, so I won't say hi. We all ignore each other as we walk past. I actually think it'll help breed more compassion and empathy into the entire human species because when you walk past someone, you'll know their name, you'll know what they're interested in, you can like very easily like pull up a conversation and talk to them about stuff. And then imagine like an always-on messenger, so you can immediately chat to anyone at any point in time, or an always-on Google search, so anytime it's just listening to your conversations and pulls up information as you need it or augmented reality for work, the, the system would be looking at your glasses would be watching and helping you work. So whenever it comes across a problem, it just helps you instantly solve it. It says, hey, just do this. Or augmented reality hologram overlays for learning anything. You just look at something and it overlays and teaches you how to do it. Imagine recipes, imagine like technical stuff, imagine the engineering problem. A few years after that, like once, once we're all wearing essentially like cameras and augmented reality overlays on our faces, then we're gonna wanna record 24 seven streams up to the, the cloud. And as a decentralized system, now you essentially have, if you look at the internet as like a global entity, a single entity, a global brain, now you've fed that, you're feeding that brain streams from 7 billion eyeballs. We create a, a very intimate and very rapid feedback loop between the human mind and the computational vastness and processing power of the global machine that we've built. As you go about your day, it just basically, uh, it's recording all that information and running all these machine learning algorithms over it, and it finds patterns, it finds problems, and the moment it knows there's a problem, it gives you a solution. I feel like this is the entire human struggle. This is the entire thing that we do as a species. This is why jobs exist, why companies exist, why businesses exist, why we upskill through education. It's to solve problems faster. And each of these great technological paradigms are very social based. They're all about merging us with the machine, augmenting our, our realities, augmenting our intelligence, augmenting our capabilities, our potential. But think of like smartphones. Uh, when a few people have them, it's kind of useless. There's no value. When everyone has one, when they're democratized, that's when you get all these emergent benefits that help everyone and add value to humanity. The same type of network effect applies to augmented reality glasses because the faster we get to the point where everyone is wearing these all day, every day, the closer the feedback loop, the more attention, the more opportunities and marketplaces open. What technology wants is to leverage us as meme machines to basically have constant attention and constant feedback loop into the system. Whereas at the moment we only ever use the internet when we look at a glowing rectangle. 
And so this is why I want everyone wearing augmented reality glasses 24 seven, um, because once you get those, then you start uh, creating this hive mind AI, collective intelligence, then we have implants, then we start merging. Like computers, internet, laptops, smartphones, wearables, AR wearables, then neural lace implants, then nanotech, and then it's just full merge. We just upload our minds into this. The faster we can merge the machine, the faster we can transcend our biological limitations, become immortal gods, and impregnate the universe with intelligence. And perhaps it all starts with Pokemon Go. Snap your thoughts at Future.